Welcome back, IBMI doofers. <laughs> uh, just say shut up, Nick. Shut, okay, I will. I won't do that again. Right. So where are we? That's right. We're looking at this code called Client RPG as part of our client update program. What we can do quickly now is update this old RPG column-based code to wonderful, beautiful, some might say, RPG for free format. Now. There used to be lots of different ways of doing this. Obviously, you could manually type in the old style, convert it, and type it into SEU. Or you could use RDI if you want to pay thousands of dollars to update your code. But now, or you could use lots of the green screen commands out there. Lots of programmers, myself included, wrote RPG upgrade utilities that would stream through the code. RCAD's a famous one. Um, there's loads of free open source ones out there. Uh, reads through the code and does its best effort uploading. But nowadays, I don't do any of that. I recommend use Visual Studio Code. It updates it at the click of a button. So here's our code. How about I just right click anywhere in this RPG code? Oh, what does convert to free format do? I wonder. Well, let's see. Boom! Modern RPG code. Wait! There's all kinds of yellow error messages happening in there. What the heck is going on? I hear you asking. Well, you're right. These aren't error messages. Yellow is just a warning. My preferred workspace, I've said in the settings in Visual Studio Code that I want my code to be indented to characters for all my if loops. Um, and the default code does it like this, indenting things. But I can fix all of that auto magically using Visual Studio Code as well, right? I just right click and say format document. It will now format the code to my preferred style layouts. Look at that. We have got a couple of other warning messages. It's basically telling us best practice. Hey, you're kind of doing things a not very good way. This is the old way of doing it, using subroutines in the global scope. Why is that? Well, because subroutines are a little bit de rigueur. Is that even the right word? They're a bit out of vogue. They're not cool. They're just a bit smelly. The way you should be doing it is a sub procedure, and we'll do that in a second. But for right now, let's ignore the fact that subroutines should not be defined in the global scope. Let's just swallow the fact that they actually are. And let's go through our code and look at things. What's going on through here? So, Remember, we had our old code. I'll compare it green screen to uh, Visual Studio Code. I haven't saved this yet, so I can look at the old code. You'll see the old code in the previous lesson, right? I'll type it up in the um, description below the video. There's my F spec for the file, for the workstation, declaring a variable, then all my code. I'm not going to spend too much time going through this because it's all pretty self explanatory. Let's look, line one says, I am line one of any modern RPG program. Star star free says I am a free format, fully free format RPG program. My control option, I'm just setting a default name of client RPG. I'm then declaring a file called clients. I'm using it for update, delete and output and it's keyed. That's much neater than that column based one, right? I'm also declaring another file called client FM. Oh, it's a workstation. Whoa, that's really more obvious. I love it. I'm then declaring declare dash s means that I'm declaring a variable. Um, uh, what does s mean? Like a global level variable? I don't even know what it means. Declare s means it's a variable. I'm calling it work DNI and it's character nine. I can tug around this formatting to space things however I like. So the code is now saying, right, I'm going to turn indicator two off. This is surplus to requirements. It's already off, but I'm going to leave it in there like the original programmer did, just so I'll let any maintenance programmers know that indicator two is an important indicator. Here's the exact same logic we just had. Do until indicator KC, F3 is on. Execute the format. Here's my select loop. When they press F3, leave. When they press F2 and indicator two is on, do the edit subroutine. When it's KD, do the search subroutine. When it's a page up or a page down, do the page up down subroutine. That's all pretty good stuff, right? Here's my in LR, which is my end of the program. Comments have changed in the in the old format. It was always an asterisk in column, I think it's column seven. 
would mean that it's a comment. But in free format, slash slash means it's a comment. After the slash slash, you can really do anything you like. If I wanted to do something like that, I could. Personally, I prefer the dashes to the asterisks, right? Here's my subroutine. Begin subroutine, search. Just a warning, it will work. Here's the same piece of code. Right, notice there's one of the C specs here. This is because um, the free format converter wasn't quite too sure what to do. Now I know what this is doing. So what this is actually doing is, this is saying, go and read this file with this key value, but not for update. So we're still doing the chain command. It's not case sensitive, I'll type however I like. Um, we then put our key field, in which in this case is disp dni. If there were multiple fields, I might do something like uh, field one, field two, and then go to the file name. Okay, that's how we read it. But in, in our case, we're just gonna do disp dni. We wanna specifically retain that asterisk n that says don't read it for lock. Ignore Visual Studio Code telling me that my coding is not very good. I'm then saying indicator 31 is important. So what I can say is percent not found, then turn on indicator 31. Otherwise, turn indicator 31 off and if. Now, if I run a little format to tidy things up, there's the same piece of code. Now, of course, I can also do things like, look, if 31 is on, then it's gonna iter, right? So let's move that into the iter statement, and we can get rid of this loop. You with me? So I can get rid of this statement entirely. Right, chain with no lock using this field to go to this file. If it's not found, turn on the error indicator and go back to the top. If it is found, turn the error indicator off and continue. Ooh. That surprised you, didn't it? Um, so this is the stage where I say that now I'm editing this video the following morning after I edited it. Of course, as I was making this video, I try to keep it all real so you'll see my fat finger moments. Uh, you'll see the coding mistakes I've made. Um, and I make a couple here, which I fix later on, but I don't want you following along right now. For example, I said percent not found, and it's not percent not found, it's not percent found. Uh, there's a couple of little mistakes I make while I'm keying this stuff in. My excuse is it was late at night, late at night last night, and, uh, but there's no excuse really. But it's part of the fun. Watch my mistakes and learn from them. Uh, they're all corrected, and uh, we compile this at the end. Anyway, that's the end of this takeover. I was just t too embarrassed to let you think that I hadn't spotted it. So um, let's dive back in. Yeah. Are there any more of these dodgy C statements that were unable to uplift? Here's two of them, right? Let's do the same piece of code for this. Right, put some spaces in. So what are we saying here? We're saying if indicator 10 is on, do this read previous, right? So we'll say asterisk indicator 10. So if indicator 10, they're only ever, well, let me make it really obvious for you and we'll get fancy in a minute. If indicator 10, we're gonna read previous. So we'll say read previous. We don't wanna lock it, the file. Then if present EOF, I know that's confusing. EOF means end of file, but it also means beginning of file. It should be EOF, BOF. So if we hit the beginning of the file on a read previous, then we want to turn on indicator 99. And if, okay. And then 11 goes forward. Let's just copy that exact command statement. Yeah, there are better ways of doing this, but I'm trying to keep it simple. So we're going to write the same stuff the same way. It becomes a read. There's the only difference, right? Let me comment these out. 
you run a format document. Here's our code. So this one, there's our code. If 10 is on, read previous with no lock, setting on 99 if you're at the beginning of the file. If 10 is on, read previous with no lock. If you hit the beginning of the file, set on 99. Well, 99 could be on because this turn is an on or an off. So before doing any of this code, just to be completely safe, I would say asterisk 99 equals off. Okay, and I'll run the format, make it neat. So again, you can see that code might appear a little bit more long-winded in modern RPG, but it makes a lot more sense. And then we've got if it is a read previous and an error, set the greater than and read previous. It's the other way. All the rest of the code looks exactly right. So let's save this and see if it will just compile, right? Easy. File, save. Let's try and do an RPG run action. Run action. Create bound RPG. Oh, it was not successful. Why is that? What didn't you like? Didn't like something. Just goes to show we all have brain farts. It's not uh, percent not found. <laughs> if not percent found, found is the op code. We don't need to have any brackets on there. We just say, if not found, that's it. Chain gets tugged up here. Let's see what that does. Okay, there's still something that's not happy about. Again, you've got to have the N right next to the read P. Can't be floating out there as its own value. It's been a while. Forgive me for being so sloppy. Nick Glitton client RPG was successful. So there's my code. So we know that I'm gonna get rid of these comments, commented out code as well, just so it looks really neat. Run one last final format documents and everything's happy. File, save it, right click, run action, crate bound RPG, off she runs. Nick Litton client RPG was successful. Let's call that from our code and see what happens, shall we? If I look at the code now in SEU, you can see that, oops, you can see that if I left window, it's all in free format. And if I call it, You can see that it's working exactly the same. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, what's next in our modernization journey? So that was a simple little quick video. Let's now convert these subroutines to subprocedures. Come back in a minute. This is where the end screen will be going ooh or something. <laughs> and then the next video. The next exciting chapter will be any second now. Come back. Come back and join me for subroutines to subprocedures.